and welcome to our Steel Tech Unlimited XT Embed How To video. Grab a drink and sit back and get ready. In this video, we're going to go in depth and show you some of the different features, controls, and settings in the XT Embed dialog and how to use the plugin most effectively. We also have a separate short intro video that is more of a broad overview of the plugin's capabilities. We'll start with the length creation setting. The default is to create one continuous part. By scrolling with the wheel down, we can change it to a maximum length for each part. If we click on the image control, we see all of our choices. Continuous, maximum length with an exact length final part, or maximum length with a minimum length final part. For now, let's set it to maximum length with exact length final part. Then we go set the profile types. There are six different types. Flat plate, bent plate angle, angle, channel, bent plate channel, and wide flange. There is an orientation setting that affects angle profiles for long leg horizontal or long leg vertical. There is also an input, input location setting like the beam plane position and tackle part, right, middle, or left. And there is a part rotation setting like the Tecla part rotation with front, top, back, and below. The last bit of information on the parameters tab is the vent plate dimensions. Here you set the size of the web, top flange, and bottom flange of vent plates along with the bending radius. Let's move on to the material tab which consists of a part data grid and a collection of part controls. At the bottom are the part controls for the threaded studs, nuts, and washers. At the top are the part controls for the different types of embed part profiles. If you hover the mouse over a part control, a tooltip will show you which profile type it sets the values for. These tooltips match the description column in the part data grid. When you click on a part control, the corresponding row in the part data grid will be highlighted. If you double click a part control, the part dialog will open. This dialog is very similar to the beam dialog in Tecla. In this dialog, you can open the profile dialog and choose a profile. This is also very similar to the profile dialog in Tecla. Steel Tech Unlimited plugins are created to provide a seamless experience between the plugin and the Tecla user interface. In the profile dialog, you can even set the dimensions on parametric profiles. You can copy a part setting to be used in another part control if you would like. Notice how the part data grid updates to show the edits to a part using the part dialog for a part control. You can also use Windows drag and drop to copy all the part values from one part control to another. You can see the updated part data grid when you do this. Let's change the profile for the channel profile part back to a channel for later use in this video. This demonstrates that the profile dialog is also available from the part data grid. Notice also that any changes made in the part data grid will show in the part dialog when we open it. We can scroll the part data grid to see the other part properties. All the properties in the part dialog are also in the part data grid for easy editing. The material column can be edited similarly to the profile column. When you edit a material cell, you can open the material catalog dialog. In SteelTech Unlimited plugins, the part BOI, bot out item, UDA, user defined attribute, are available as well as the gauge UDA. All of this gives you complete control over all of a part's properties when they are created by the plugin. Let's look at the studs tab and review the bolt controls. Several of them were toggled off, so we will click on them to toggle them on. If they are off, the plugin will not create them. If we double click on one, we will see the bolt dialog. Like parts, all bolt properties are completely controlled by you. You can even load any of your pre-saved bolt setting files from your model or firm folder. We will load the stud predefined settings for this example. Using the bolt dialog, we set our stud diameter and length. Nut and washer settings will not be used for studs, so let's ignore them. Instead of setting other bolt group properties, simply drag the settings from the one we edited and drop them on the others. When we check them, we can see they were all copied. What you are looking at are the stud locations for the web of our profile. To the right is the near side or front of the part, to the left is the far side or back. Seeing them this way feels very intuitive. We have two bolt groups on the near side and two on the far side, each with their own set of location distance controls. This allows for some very complicated staggered bolt groups to be created, as you can imagine. There are also settings for creating studs in the corners of the profile. We will copy the stud settings from one of the web studs to one of the corner studs and then drag and drop to the other one. Now let's set some locations for these studs. 
We can put 36 spaces at 24 inches in our spacing control because the STM bit plug-in will truncate the bolt group at the end of the material. If we leave the start and end distance controls empty, the studs will be centered on the part using the spacing settings. In this example, we will only create the studs on the inside or front side of the profile. We will leave the back or far side stud bolt controls toggled off. The stud locations for the top flange can also be set up. For channel profile and some other types, only the near side flange studs are available. Applying these settings allows us to use the XT Embed plugin to create our bent plate channel embed. And here's the result. Notice that there are two parts because the input points exceeded the maximum part length. The stud location settings are used on each part regardless of the length of the part. This part seems a bit long for a bent plate, and if we go to the parameters page, we see that we had the maximum length set to 20 feet. Most bed plates are usually 8 or 10 feet maximum length, so let's change the maximum part length to 10 feet. After clicking on modify, we can see that the embed now has three parts, two at 10 feet long, and the last on the remainder of the input length. Let's turn off the web studs on the far side and change the spacing of the near side web studs to three inches from each end. And then let's add some threaded studs to the far side of the web. It looks like there are already some nail holes being added. We can change the locations to one and a half inches from each end and three inches from the top and bottom. That should give us four holes in each part. Let's change the hole to a threaded stud on the right or near side of the web. The threaded stud, nut and washer settings from the material tabs, will be used along with the bolt properties to create a threaded stud, so we need to set the bolt properties. For threaded studs, toggle the nut and washers on. Copy these properties to the other bolt group using the drag and drop. Oops, we copied from the wrong bolt group. Let's fix those settings. There, now it looks correct. Let's make these threaded studs staggered by setting the locations on the upper group and the lower group. It's a good idea to also check the weld settings. Welds like parts and bolts have a dialog for setting all the properties for each weld to give you complete control over each weld created by the plugin. Now we click on modify to see the changes in the embed in the model. The threaded studs, nuts, and washer are created as parts in the model, so all the part settings are used from the materials tab, but sizes are from the bolt properties. Click on modify and there are threaded studs, so not with the staggered pattern we are looking for, so let's update the locations. It looks better, but they're still on the wrong side of the web. To correct this, change the setting to the far side of the web and modify the plugin one last time. I'm also going to demonstrate some typical top flange stud spacing on a wide flange profile. First, select the plugin in the model, then click on the Git button to get the properties for that instance. This time, we'll change the profile to one that has a very wide flange. Then we turn off all the other studs. First, toggle all the web studs off. Then, toggle all the corner studs off. Now change the location and spacing of the top flange studs. Then, we'll toggle the studs under the top flange off and click on Modify. We forgot to toggle the bottom flange studs, so let's do that and click on Modify again. Now we can see all the studs. Even though this video was longer than normal, I still have barely scratched the surface in showing you what the XT Embed is capable of. Thanks for checking out our amazing new plugin. Steel Tech Unlimited's YouTube channel is full of video examples of our other applications and plugins. Be sure to go check it out. Thanks for checking out our amazing new plugin. Steel Tech Unlimited's YouTube channel is full of video examples of our other applications and plugins. Be sure to investigate. For any questions, comment below or email us at info at steeltechu.com, I-N-F-O at S-T-E-E-L-T-E-K-U dot com. To download or purchase, visit our website, steeltechu.com. 
have a great day and we'll see you next time.